You're listening to Radio 2 on 693 and 909 kilohertz. Here it is, Dottie's Different Show. <laughs> feet, won't we? Yes. We, we? We'll slave and work hard and break our backs working for Britain, won't we? Yes. Well, you will. I'm off my holidays to Bermuda. <laughs> Thank you. What a reception. What a thrill standing here, drinking in this heady atmosphere. What could possibly have got you all here today? Chloroform. <laughs> <laughs> what an audience. What an audience. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our cheese and wine party. Yes. <laughs> if you don't get any wine, hard cheese. What? <laughs> What an audience. Today's audience are all, all into homemade wine. You can probably hear them all sloshing about and sitting there fermenting. <laughs> Looking around, I see we have a few vintage bottles here and there. And a couple in the front row are about to pop their corks. <laughs> there a gentleman over here with his socks off, treading the grapes, is it? No, he's counting his bunions. This, uh... <laughs> Today's show, folks, is like a great big cocktail. Now, what's the nearest thing to a cocktail? The parson's nose. Thank you. We've... Beautiful day here for, for squirting a tin of talcum powder up the wine cellarman's apron and saying, how's that for a little dry white? <laughs> we have a fabulous lineup of unusual acts for you tonight, folks. We were going to have the, the Irish world's champion poker player, but unfortunately, during last night's game, he burnt his hand on the poker. With... <laughs> have the smallest human cannonball he gets a volunteer from the audience to blow him out of a pea shooter <laughs> you'll see a conjurer who will juggle with live crabs while yodeling he doesn't know anything about it yet he still thinks he has two doves in his trouser pocket <laughs> Henrietta the world's first and only singing Kentucky chicken will render an aria from Madame Butterfly one fine lay <laughs> I've really been, I've really been looking forward to today's show, folks, because the BBC have promised me a spectacular show, a cast of thousands. Where they are? I'll ask this studio attendant with the flat cap and open-toed smock. Hey, excuse me, sir. Uh, are you with the BBC? Without a doubt. Uh, yeah, only, you see, I'm expecting a cast of thousands. Aye, well, you're looking at him. No, 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 you don't understand, sir. I, I've been promised a thousand voices. Aye, well, happen you've not heard about the cutbacks, then? The cutbacks? Aye, without a doubt, there's been cutbacks, you know. Without a doubt? They're cutting down on everything now, you know. I thought so, they just cut my line out there. <laughs> without a doubt? Without a doubt. Letty from America. Aye. That's going to be postcard from the Isle of Man. Good gracious <laughs> me. A book at bedtime. Mm -hmm. That's changing to a leaflet at breakfast. Oh. <laughs> This is all new to me. And even Percy Thraw has been pruned, And you know. about time, oh, yes. <laughs> He's been asking for it, bedding out all these years. <laughs> but, 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 see, look, I wanted a show full of stars. No chance. No chance. They've had Patrick Moore rubbed out by an alien. <laughs> After all, I mean, you can't get away with looking up other people's galaxies forever. <laughs> Venus. That's harmless. <laughs> <laughs> I going to do about my all-star show? Well, up and I can be of service to you. You? Why, who are you? Well, I'm a turn. A turn? Aye, a turn. <laughs> Without a doubt. <laughs> I do them all, you know. Hello, playmates. Here and I'll be for your very eyes. <laughs> Ask his name, small but beautifully marked. <laughs> Hello, playmates. I'm going to sing the B song. No, no, you're not. I do the singing, you see. I was trained at La Scala. That's an Italian restaurant in Didsbury. <laughs> <laughs> Who else can you do? Now, ladies and gentlemen. <sighs> now, just get myself comfy. <laughs> no, please. Oh, it's a common lot here. No, no, listen, listen, listen. Because the producer, you see, the producer of this show is very sophisticated. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. No, please, please. No, he phoned me up and he said, now he said, hard, he said, hard. 
Of course, I talk like that, you know. Yes, no, well, he can't help it. He was weaned on dripping. <laughs> dripping? Oh, dear, oh, dear. It's dripping again, Dad. For God's sake, wipe your nose, you are dirty, old man. <laughs> I've got a bad hand, Harold. <laughs> that great big flashy bird you brought home last night bit me. Well, it's your own fault for sticking your hand in the cage. <laughs> this is all very well, but I wanted someone on a more intellectual level, someone who's prepared to give me a boost. Oh, look, everyone. Look over there. It's a piano forte. <laughs> What a coincidence. I've been booked to play the piano forte or two twenties. <laughs> I just slipped that one in. <laughs> now then, to play the piano, I need a little stool for my botte. That does it. You're driving me up the wall. Max Wall, no relation to the Great Wall of China. Oh. Oh, the world's gone mad. Don't go mad, you little pommy cobbler. Cobber, I says. Please, I don't have my right glasses on, Goddy. Wait a minute. You're not a studio assistant. You're... You're the great gobbright. The, the <laughs> Peter Goodright, multi clack. Peter Goodright. <laughs> Without a doubt. Fancy <laughs> you being here, Peter. Look, tell, Peter, have you got a minute? Why? Because I'd just like you to listen. You know, I'm, I'm trying to free up myself. And I... But you know, I'm a sincere <laughs> Well, I don't really know about that. I don't talk about that. Well, I can't wait. You love a man. I don't think that you can win. You can all hold it back with you. Oh, Gloria. Oh, Gloria. Oh, beloved. I can't tell you how much I long for these, these few brief moments together. Oh, me too. I hate it when you have to go. Go? Go? Well, I don't have to go for half an hour. Well, why, why don't we just... Again. Hold on. What's that? It, it's my husband. I know what's going on in that bedroom. Open this door now. Come on, open it. Oh, he's in one of his jealous rages. Oh, oh my goodness. I had no idea of this. Well, I did warn you I had a husband. I know, I know, but you... You never told me you kept him locked in the wardrobe. Uh, fish and chips five times. Uh, fish, chips and peas three times. Uh, meat pie and chips with gravy twice. I, I, I meat, meat and potato pie and it's on. Steak and kidney pudding. Uh, peas and chips four times. Uh, chicken and chips. Uh, sausage and chips. Uh, Mm. Uh, double fritter and chips, uh, beef burger and chips, uh, six fish, fe, 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 fish cakes, and a cheese and onion pie with curry sauce, and, mm, and, 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 and 25 rolls and butter, uh, 14 pickled onions, and six bottles of sarsaparilla, please. I can't serve you all that. Why not? Because this is a chemist's. The fish and chip shop's next door. Oh, thank you very much. You. Who? Me? No, him. Him? No, him next to him. Me? No, not you, him. Him here? No, him there. There? No, not there. There. Here? No, next to him there. Me? Here? No, not you. Him there, next to you, here. Him? Yes, him. Do you mean me? I, oh, at last. Yes, I mean you. What do you want? Do me a favour, will you? What kind of favour? Will you tell him I want him? Who? Him? No, not him. Him. No, you. Him. No. My name is Methuselah. Albert Methuselah. I'm the oldest man that ever lived. I'm 
I'm 969 years old, and I don't feel a day over 840. <laughs> the only thing that makes me feel old is when I keep getting those flipping telegrams every hundred years. Still, <coughs> I've had a good life, a long life. Ooh, an awful long life. I've been happy and I've been sad. I've been thrilled and I've been bored. Hmm. I've been bored a lot. I once spent 80 years being bored. And then something exciting happened. The wife snuffed it. <laughs> Just before our Strontium 90 wedding anniversary was. <laughs> Only 754 she was. And she still looked the same as the day we were wed. Wrinkled, haggard, horrible. <laughs> If I could have my life over again, I'd be 1,938. You work it out. I'm right. <laughs> It'd be nice to be young again, though. Oh, Show me wild oats. <laughs> they were the best 300 years of my life. <laughs> oh, when I was 475, it was a very good year. It was a very good year for... Uh, for... Uh... <laughs> I forget. <laughs> There we are, sir. Short back and sides. I'll just take the basin off. Right, how's that, sir? <laughs> ah, is that to sir's liking? Anything on, sir? Stalk? Blue band? St. Ivo? <laughs> One moment, sir. Just a quick brush down before you go. Dear, bye. Oh, dear. Bye. Come, sir. You had a fall of dandruff. I thought you were wearing a white coat when you sat down. Right. right there we are, sir. That'll be 75p, excluding the tip. Here you are. 75p. Thank you, sir. And uh, Middletown Boy for the 2.30 at Haydock Park. <laughs> Charming chap. Right, and the next one, please. Ah, oh, what a nice little old gentleman. Well, it's Old Age Pensioners Day today, Gaffer. As well as half-price haircuts, we have an Old Age Pensioners Go-As-You-Please service. Go-As-You-Please? Yes, yes, you can, you can do anything you like today. You can leave your shirt tail hanging out, you can cut your toenails without putting paper down first, and you can have your hair done for 35p. Well, all I want is a punk haircut. Are you a punk rocker, then, Gaffer? You said it, man. Right on, brother. <laughs> but I never did. I thought that big safety pin in your nose was holding your nostrils together. <laughs> Look, can you give me a punk haircut, or can't you? Can I? Into the chair, I never refuse a challenge. Right. Now then, where's my paint pot? Right, I'll just get my colour chart. Here we are. Forty glorious punk colours for the over-60s. Right. Now, get in the pink with punk. <laughs> Have a browse through that, sir. Well, I'm stimulating the strands. Yes, let me have a look, sir. Well, I must say, sir, you haven't got many, have you? Yes. Right. Now, I think I'll paint this little ball bit purple, and then we'll build it up from there. Right? Oh, there's a nice little bump. I could do that in chartreuse. But have you uh, have you picked your colours yet, sir? Uh, I'll have red and green. Red and well, green. Well, more of a turking quoise. Yes. Yes. Eh? <laughs> right. Red and green is it. Well, a very nice choice, if I might say so, Pop. Red and green are the in colours this year. They'll go with your eyes and your teeth. Right. Now, here we go, then. <laughs> A little dash here, a little dab there. A little dash here and a little dab there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, do A little dab there and a little dab there. They are, you'll soon have a multicoloured top pop. And all it'll cost you is 15 quid. 15 pounds? You told me it had only cost me 35 pence. Ah, uh, ah, uh, but, ah, uh, yes, but, ah, uh, but, ah, uh, but, ah, uh, but, ah, uh, but, but that was before, sir. Before what? Well, before I knew you needed two undercoats and a high-gloss finish. <laughs> well, young man, this is it. No turning back now. Have you ever fought against the forces of evil before? Just once, Sir Kenneth. I don't mean the time you clouted the traffic warden, lad. I, I am a little apprehensive, sir. Oh, don't worry, my boy. I, Sir Kenneth, can hardly do it. I've fought many a battle with Lucifer's forces and lived to tell the tale. We have all we need to protect ourselves from this wicked Welsh warlock and to rescue your sister from his evil clutches. By Jove, I needed that. <laughs> Have you got a gun, Sir Kenneth? Gun, 
minions are of little use tonight, lad, when Satan's minions are abroad. Ha, 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 ha. heavens. I have a talisman for each of us. Amulets from the great mystic city of the East, Skegness. And a garland of garlic to go round our necks. Yes, and some of that stuff Henry Cooper splashes on. What's that for, Sir Kenneth? To take away the pong of that red garlic. <laughs> look, Sir Kenneth, look. They're there, in the valley, just as you said. They're carrying flaming torches. Of course they are. It's flaming dark. That's why. <laughs> now they'll feast and drink. And then, oh, and then, and then, the sacrifice of the maiden. Why, they're wearing animal masks and, and flowing robes. See, there, that, that's him. That's Mordecai, the one with the goat's face. Oh, what a horrible mask. He's not wearing a mask. <laughs> Listen. The evil one speaks. Gather on now, boys. I'll give you the facts oh, now. No. I'll give you the facts now. These are the facts. Now, silence! Silence now! Silence, my children. There will be time enough for merriment soon. For pleasures of the flesh. Yes. yes. Tonight, on the eve of all hallows, we have another reason to rejoice. Yes, a young initiate will make up our number to 13. Young, yielding, fleshy thighs. Oh. <laughs> then we, the coven, shall be at our most powerful. Stop! Stop! I, I challenge thee and thy powers in the name of the lords of the right-hand path and Big Willie Whitelaw. I demand you release... The maiden. Oh, hello, Ken boy. Yes, how are you, boy? <laughs> how are you doing now? In the savings of the soul game still, are you? Yes, I am, Mordecai, you wicked old warlock. And I want this young man's sister. Hand her over. You know my power is stronger than yours. Not anymore, boy. Not anymore. I have gained power over the pit. I shall release those who cry in torment. Oh, no, not the pit. Yes, the not pit. Not the pit. The pit. Not the pit. Order in court. Order in court. Now... The case before this court today is that of progress versus ignorance is bliss. Representing progress is Mr. Kenneth Dodd, QC, and defending is Mr. Talfarin Thomas, QC. Uh, Mr. Dodd, will you outline your case? Uh, y yes, my lord. Uh, the, the basic question before us today, Your Honour, is this. Does progress and scientific advancement lead to a better way of life, or is, in fact, ignorance bliss? I put it to this court that my unlearned colleague, Mr. Thomas, is amply qualified to talk about ignorance. Objections, Your Honour. Yes, Objection. Mr. Thomas. What's ignorance? <laughs> Objection overruled. Continue, Mr. Dodd. What was man's finest achievement? Was it the wheel, electricity, penicillin, or finding somewhere to park in the middle of Manchester? <laughs> no, no, boy, no. Man's greatest hour was the day he invented gym slips. And suspender belts, and women's garters, and bras. Oh, yes, what an invention that was. Silky yielding white thighs, and pleasures of the flesh. No, no, pleasures of the flesh. Mr. Thomas, is, yes. is this relevant? Oh, it is indeed, Your Honour. Aye, pleasures of the flesh is relevant. I shall show you now, and I shall demonstrate. Exhibit A, a voluptuous young lady... Wearing a gym slip and suspender belt. Mr. Thomas, Ooh. what on earth has this to do with progress? Ah, yes. Well, you see, Your Honour, I've been trying for months now and I'm getting nowhere with her. <laughs> That's a fact. Mr. Dodd, will you please call your first witness? Yes, my lord. To prove how important scientific breakthroughs are, oh. I go back into history to call my first witness, the famous Greek mathematician Archimedes. If you will take the stand, sir, Archimedes, you are described as being one of the foremost thinkers of your time. I, I am that. <laughs> and you made one of the most significant
great discoveries in the history of physics. Aye, I did. Can you tell the court exactly what happened on that day? Aye, I was sitting in my bath when all of a sudden inspiration struck. <laughs> I leapt out of my bath and I raced naked through the streets of Athens, shouting, Eureka! Eureka! <laughs> and what was it you discovered? When you race naked through the streets of Athens, shouting, Eureka! Eureka! You don't half get a lot of funny loot. <laughs> rubbish! Rubbish, man. All this science and technology, it's a lot of rubbish, man. What we want to do is go back to nature. Live with the animals, man. Be like Tarzan. Me, Tarzan. <laughs> Me, Jane. Me, king of jungle. Me live as monkeys and apes do. Me wear only loincloth for protection. <laughs> Tarzan, why are you always bellow like that? It's horrible when you sit on these cold stone slabs. <laughs> Mr. Dodd, please continue. Yes, well, progress, Your Honor. Progress, you can't stop it. In nature, everything is constantly changing. A seed becomes a flower. A caterpillar becomes a butterfly. A Scotsman becomes blind drunk. Have you, have you never seen a spring lamb burring forth its young and thought to yourself, why is this happening? I'm in the middle of Woolworths. <laughs> progress. Twaddle, man. Absolute twaddle. All this progress is rubbish. It's so confusing, isn't it? I mean, everything is so complicated nowadays. You can't even walk into a shop and buy a bag of crisps without it becoming a major issue. Yes, Gaffer, can I help you? Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'd like a bag of crisps, please. Yes, uh, 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 what, uh, what flavour, sir? Chicken, beef, bovril, gammon, Worcester sauce, barbecue, tomato, cheese and onion, salt and vinegar, smoky bacon, prawn cocktail or plain? Um... Uh, plain, please. Sir, sir. Yes. Right, uh, what shape? Pardon? Uh, what shape would you like? Oh. Uh, square shape, star shape, ball shape, tube shape, monster shape, fish shape, straight shape, long shape, thin shape, spaceship shape, crinkle cut, or ordinary? Um, uh, ordinary, Mary. Right. Uh, ordinary, plain crisps. Yes, just ordinary, plain crisps. Right. Uh, what size? Ordinary pack, medium pack, bumper pack, party pack, family pack, economy pack, or small pack? Oh, get knotted. <laughs> what sort of knot? Slip knot? Reef knot? <laughs> What's it say? Now then, before my learned colleague makes his final address, I would like to appeal to the ladies of the jury. Is there a lady in the house wearing stockings? My fan belt's broken, see, and I can replace it with a pair of stockings. Preferably sheer black ones with seams down the back. Uh, Mr. Oh. Thomas, yeah, I, I was under the impression that you didn't have a car. I haven't. Just a fan belt. <laughs> Mr. Dodd, please make your closing address. Uh, yes, right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I mean, what do you think? Hands up all those who vote for progress. Hands up all those who vote for ignorance. Hands up all those who don't know. Hands up all those who don't care. <laughs> Hands up all those who've gone home. <laughs> right? The gone homes win. Next case. <laughs> Time to touch the morning Before it slips away Have you ever seen the sunshine Peeping through your window glass Have you ever noticed Jack Frost Dancing lightly on the grass Have you ever tasted apples with the dew still on the skin Have you ever loved somebody You'll never see again Take your time to touch the morning 
Touch the morning Before it slips away Take your time to taste the sunshine While it hangs there on the trees Take your time to touch the morning Touch the morning on your knees Take your time to touch the morning Slips away. Take your time to taste the sunshine while it hangs there on the tree. Take your time to touch the morning. Touch the morning on your knees. Take your time to touch the morning. Touch the morning on your knees. Dottie's Different Show, starring Ken Dodd, with Talfrin Thomas, Marlene Sidaway, and Peter Wheeler, with special guest Peter Goodright. The Brian Fitzgerald Orchestra provided the music, and the program was produced by James Casey.